my, my thoughts on a few thoughts, and then you, brethren, the rest of the convention, is certainly I'll move back, sit back, and I would only be on my feet if there were a need of aiding ministry or uh, keeping the assembly so that everyone can be in divine order or thereby as we see it. But there's another scripture before I, I start in 1 Corinthians 12 that I would like to use in um, the book of Ephesians. And it's familiar. All these scriptures are very familiar because I have around me biblical theologians, students of the scriptures, men that can thumb through the Bible in a moment of seconds uh, and even not use it. Uh, they have memory and they can quote it. And there are some very excellent uh, men around me that knows the scriptures far beyond myself in terms of depth and insight. Um, I primarily have manifested an evangelistic gift in my ministry. God gave it to me. I really, really uh, have never felt I belong or fitted in the role of a pastor. But I have done it because of beginning of ministry and because of loyalty to the sheep and to my predecessor. But my gift was always in another location. And I had labored in the area God would let me labor in and tried to be faithful in it. But I, I, so there are men around me that have a lot of men. Only ask that through the convention that all of us treat one another kindly with the pathway of charity, bearing all things, believing all things, hoping all things, enduring all things. Uh, remember that uh, one brother may speak from a different perspective altogether than another brother. Uh, listen closely. Don't sit in an argumentative spirit. Uh, don't attempt to cross one another or to uh, have what we term the past years, the threshing floor. Uh, that's over. That's done. That's said. Uh, anyone attempting that is going to get in trouble. Uh, with me, uh, first of all, because um, I want every man to speak as God allows him to speak. Amen. I want him to speak without argument or without dispute. Amen. I want him to speak watching the Spirit, uh, trusting his gift will work, his ministry <coughs> will work, and then I believe I'm among wise men. I believe I'm among men of counsel. I believe this is a very orderly body and that our foundation is charity. And I think that some things are over, the argumentative day is over, the crossing one another, uh, the disputing, that's not what the people need now. They need to hear the gospel. They need to hear the gospel. And let it come from different perspectives. You don't have to agree with me in doctrine to stand here. Doctrine is important. You can never remove doctrine from the scriptures. Hear it. If it differs from your doctrine, just hear it. Just listen and consider. Also consider what I say. And the Lord give the understanding. Just consider. If you approach a, a, a doctrinal subject different than I, I'm going to learn from you. I'm not going to pick you to pieces. I'm not going to try to say, I don't see it that way. I'm going to listen to you and to see if I can get something that I have not seen in the scripture. And remember, you can never learn while you're talking. You learn while you're listening. You can never do that. So I, I, I think that day is past, and I think that we have men here of charity, and then I would refrain from name-calling. Uh, if you disagreed with a leader in the past, why bring his name up and vilify him now? Uh, while uh, if, if you were going to vilify him, it was in the day when he was living, find a private counsel with him and tell him you disagree. That's the proper biblical way. But not to bring his name up or to speak disparagingly of any assembly, any church, any minister, anywhere, that will not produce good among us. It will only produce antagonism, bringing up wounds, that have been buried, or should be. Uh, the men that have marched before me, uh, I honor them. I, if I speak publicly, I do not disparage them. Uh, I have stopped men here in this place 
from vilifying men personally that have gone on before me, uh, even some that might have been against me, done for me. But I don't feel it's profitable for us to uh, disparage one another, speak maliciously. And, uh, but I, I think that above all things, when I finish here in a few moments, I want you to remember Brother Marlowe as a man of courtesy, as a man of understanding, a man not a fool in the pulpit. I want you to remember me as a man striving to heal the wounds rather than open new ones. I want you to remember me as a man that loved God's people enough to say, we need to come together. We need to break down walls. We need to tear down partitions. We need to stop looking at each other and say, that church is peculiar. It's different. He's different. No, remember, we're all different. There isn't one of us that is exactly the same. Study identical twins closely, and there are no identical twins. They use the term identical twins, but there are no real identical twins. All of us have different fingerprints, different eyes, different nose curves, different stands, different positions. We are made diverse, and because diversity can prevail in creation, creation prevails. If creation becomes monolithic and structured in the same way, you would see creation cease to exist. Yes. But because it's different and we're diverse, then God allows us the privilege and the freedom to help each other. So in the book of Ephesians, uh, and in Ephesians the 11th chapter, uh, pardon me, I'm so sorry. Ephesians, there is no 11th chapter. In Ephesians, I have Corinthians and uh, on the night of the, Ephesians 1 and 10. Uh, look at that verse, and I'll read it, and I'll move through this as quickly as I can, giving grace and time to the rest of the brethren. Verse 10, that in the dispensation, Ephesians 1, of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth even in him. Now you have to link the 11th verse with that. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh, in all, th worketh all things after uh, the counsel of his own will. Verse 12 that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Verse 13, in whom also you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Finally, in conclusion, the 14th verse, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of his glory. I don't want to eulogize and, and go through and, uh, all the different aspects of verse uh, 10 to 14, but I want to go back to verse 10. It's apparent that Paul the apostle, according to the revelation he had from God, he said, the ultimate will of God was to gather together to the dispensing of all the accumulation or the fullness of time or times that he might ultimately gather together in one, in one, all things, all things in Christ. So the will of God the Father is his son be glorified by having all things in him. Yes. Putting all things under his power. Yes. That's the ultimate will of God, the Father. That's God's will. Yes. Uh, and the ultimate will is that all things, that's all things, all is inclusive of that which is in heaven and that which is in earth <coughs> that includes all of motivated living beings, whether celestial or terrestrial, 
earthly or heavenly, that in the ultimate end of God's ultimate will, that he might gather together in one all things in Christ. It is Christ then must ultimately be the headship, the head of all creation in heaven and in earth. The angels being subject to him, all celestial beings being subject to him, and then all earthly beings being subject to him, to Christ. That's the will of God. That's not my will, but it's God's will. A man's will differs in that, and we know it does because he attempts to pen people up in his pen here, his pen there, his movement here, his movement there, and put them in political motivation and number them, stamp them, brand them by being in his denominated organizational structure so he can then have bishopric and headship over them rather than Christ. But that's not God's will. That isn't God's will. Uh, the will of God is that ultimately all creation in heaven and in earth be under Christ. In heaven, under Christ. One, under Christ. Now if I see myself laboring, I'm wrong if I labor in any other motivation in the end of my teaching or preaching. And I would instruct the younger men around me because I, I, I'm seeing my years roll by rapidly now. I don't know how many more I will have. But I would instruct the younger men, if I could, that you don't strive to pin God's people up, to brand God's people, to make them your heritage rather than Christ, to make them your lineage rather than Christ, to get your personality involved rather than Christ. I would urge you to let Christ become the head of the church, the head of his creation. I would urge you to do that because that's the will of God, as I see it in the scriptures. Now, if you differ with me, talk to me privately. As I said, I'm not in the order of any place now in the pulpit. I don't think it's good for God's family. Uh, but it, but I, I see that the church needs to let God help them to take a different attitude so they can go to a different altitude. Because if we keep the same attitude, we're going to stay at the same altitude. We can't rise higher. We can't escape ourselves. We can't get beyond the entrapment of our own will, our own idea, our own dominion. We'll never get out of the pen which we build for ourselves and entrap others. Uh, uh, one of the prophets, didn't he use this uh, phrase? I think, I, I'm not familiar with chapter and verse, but didn't he, Jeremiah, uh, Isaiah, among my men are found, e among my people are found evil men. They lay traps, they ensnare men, uh, they catch them, words to that effect. Uh, uh, that, that spirit is a spirit that I want to rule rather than Christ. I'm not dealing with order. I'm not dealing with structural government in the church. Dealing with that more in 1 Corinthians, well, I'm talking about the headship, the ultimate reign of the ultimate ruler, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. That, that's what I'm speaking about right now. Uh, he must have, he must have the ability, Christ must, through the office of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, he must be able to talk to every single one of his sons wherever they are on this earth. His people, Amen. wherever they are on this earth. All right. That means he can bypass me, though I'm in structural government. I'm in what's called the hierarchy of the church. By, by position and calling and work, I've labored in what's termed the ministry. But if God so wills that in the Bradenton church, that he wants to speak to one of his sheep individually, uh -huh. he can move me out of the way. He does not have to let me stand there and hinder his operation of the Holy Spirit in the life of that sheep. Because the sheep are not mine. I'm not, I'm not to be territorial. I have no dominion, but Christ must have dominion. I must labor in the gift and calling and the office he gives me. And God asks you to respect that. God asks you to honor that. Not make me a king, not make me a more than I am. I'm a clay man, I'm mortal. 
I have limitations. I will die. I will cease to exist one day. My flesh is getting older. But ultimately, we must let Christ come in and rule the church. He must speak. Messiah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. He must speak again to the church. Let me say that loudly, emphatically. This is on video. It's going all across the world. This meeting is across the world right now through that camera there. I want to say again, ultimately, the church must let Christ again rule the church. He must rule the church. He must come in again. He must be able to speak. He must be able to lead. He must be able to govern. And is not moving aside offices and government and ministry and respect. But he must take hold of the church. I've never felt the need as I feel it now. I'm wanting to do something with the Bradenton Church. I confess I'm not sufficient. I confess I don't have the last word, but he does. I don't have the last answer, but he does. I can't heal, but he can. I can't deliver, but he can. I can't lose, but he can. I can't set free, but he can. Praise the name of the Lord. He must come back into the church. He must speak to the church. He must let his spirit rule again in the church. He must be loud and clear in the church. He must invigorate, excite the saints to where the saints are a working ministry. The church becomes a ministry. Set free. Loose of God. The Holy Spirit leading and guiding them with no man binding the gift of the Holy Ghost in them. Uh, we've grown afraid of that. We've grown afraid of that. Men have mentored us, taught us well the last few years that if you let the Holy Spirit operate too freely, things will get out of hand. Well, I think they've been out of hand with men doing that. Right. <laughs> How do they agree that this is the problem? With carnal men sitting in carnal places and the Holy Spirit not having its way. of the Holy Spirit. I'm not afraid of the Holy Ghost. It must come back again. It must speak to the church. It must give us a land of beginning again again. We must repair the breaches. We must be healed by the Holy Spirit. We must. We must. Because the, what we've done is what we've done. We're doing what we can. But ultimately, it's his will for all things to be under Christ, oh, yes. to be in Christ. Oh, yes. And for that to happen, I can't attack you because I differ with you. I can't think I'm better than you are. No. I can't look at your assembly and say, he teaches things that I don't teach. But he, if he's not teaching heresy, he's going to teach some things I don't teach. No minister is going to speak exactly like I do. You'll not go to the next assembly and find every minute of the service ordered like this is ordered. If, you're, if, if we do, we have nothing but an organizational structure, a plastered on the wall church, a cardboard group, a, a, a group that is nothing but politicized in the minds of men. We must come to the place where the rain will fall from heaven. Praise the name of the Lord. beyond a certain point. Right. We must be firm. We must be men of stature. We must be men of courage. We must be men of conviction. But I cannot afford to let my carnal spirit rise up against you and start slandering you, talking about you, ridiculing you, cutting you out, cutting you down. Be one as thou art in me, 
and I in thee, John 17, the prayer of Jesus, yes. that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So that, that's, uh, that's very uh, in my spirit. I see, and I don't want to leave Bradenton. I'm not going to, I, 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 I will promise you, brethren, I would always arrive at this place, but I have arrived. You know, you can drive a long time to get somewhere and finally get there. You can, you can take years. Some men get, take shortcuts and get there, I suppose. But with me, my ministry has been tumultuous, at times upheaval, at times I wondered if I was going to survive, at times I wondered if I was going to live the next day. Uh, someone said, what has your ministry been? I said, a mi mixture of hell and hell. <laughs> I've lived in hell sometimes. I don't have to worry about the pit in the ground. I've met hell right here. <laughs> Uh, I don't have to worry about heaven to go to. I found heaven right here. Praise the name of the Lord. But let me tell you something. It takes you a long time to get somewhere where you're going. But eventually you can get there. The late leader, Brother Lloyd Gordon, said to me in a dream, before it, he, he was not there in person, but in a dream, he was stripped of, his, uh, uh, of the uh, decoration of government. He had the leadership of... Uh, I, I was in the military, so I'm used to knowing men by rank. I, I, I recognize a man by rank. Yes, sir. You know, well, by the next time, hello. <laughs> but when that certain fellow came, that golden eagle, or that two bars, or that one silver bar, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> the next guy comes by, hello, how are you? <laughs> hey, brother. <laughs> yeah. but, but you know, when I saw Brother Goodman, I knew he had rank in ministry, as other men have had and do have. And, but in the dream, he was stripped of all that rank. This was just prior to his death. He was stripped of all that rank. Nothing on him. And he was, his tunic was smeared with blood. And it was ragged, and it was torn. And he stood in that colorless jeep, and stood there, rolled up beside me. And I was down in the field, and I was trying to get my weapon up, and I was trying to uh, get going, move it. And you know what that is? Here's a combat veteran sitting right here. And uh, I was trying to get going. He just said, uh, Brother Marlowe, Brother Marlowe, quit struggling. He said, there's a clearing over there. You can get out of the battle. There's a clearing. And I said, Brother, where's your rank? Where's your rank? Never mind the rank. Listen to the voice. Listen to the voice. He was gone. But he said, there's a clearing over there. Folks, there's a clearing over there. There's a clearing over there. We won't always be on the battlefield. There's a clearing. Saints of God, there's a clearing. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. For if you believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. There's a clearing. Don't get on the battlefield of religion. Don't get caught in the struggles of politicizing uh, puppets of religion mm -hmm. that we live in in this day. Yes. Uh, move yourself from the men that want to make another movement happen. Yes. Move yourself from those that are struggling to make movements exist. Uh -huh. Get Christ as your head. Yes. Let Christ become the dominion. Yes. Let Christ become the ruler. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. My cry today to the churches, let Christ become the ruler. Yes. 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 Him speak. Because he has everything in control. He has everything in divine order. He's not out of order. He's in order. And uh, it just uh, let me, I'll, I'll tell you you're too long if I'm not uh, very careful because of your uh, courtesy to listen to me and then uh, because of the zeal I have uh, in my spirit to uh, do what the Lord would do put upon my heart, but I uh, shall so move on here. But let's go to 1 Corinthians 12, and, and just th this ties in with what I'm saying. I'm not going far beyond the dimensions 
I've already said here, uh, but uh, I'm urging, I'm urging, I'm urging you around me because I know, I'm conscious that I am mortal and I could be with you several more years. I may not be with you those years, but I don't want you to remember me as a man, and I'm changing a lot in the Bradenton Assembly, because I don't want the Assembly here to remember a man who grew old after 52 years here in this place, with my head bowed and my shoulders stooped. I want you to remember me as a vigorous, combative man that combated the vows of the devil right. all against Satan from the beginning to the end. Amen. I want you to remember me as a man with vision, not a man that lost my eyesight. I don't want this assembly to wind up at a dead-end street. If I'm not here, I still want this assembly to come together. I still trust you, brother. I still want you to come. This assembly must go on to the final end and conclusion that God has for it. It cannot die with a monument built to Brother Marlowe with 40 or 50 people or 100 people or whatever God would let me have or a couple of hundred. But it cannot die that way. No assembly needs to be a whispering little hat going out in the silence of the night just bearing the imprint of that man who withered and died and they withered and died. They must hear the last challenging word right. come from that man of God. There is a clearing over there. We cannot stay here. We must go on. There must be constant change in the church of the living God. We cannot remain in one place. We cannot become pulverized by opposition. We cannot die in bigotry. We must not say, I saw that. I don't see this. You must have an open mind, Amen. an open heart, yes. an open spirit yes. to change and to go from here yes. to there. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. We cannot let this be the conclusion of the whole matter. No. The church cannot remember fragmentation, disputation, politicizing. It cannot remember bigotry and hate. We cannot live in the memories of those that we hate from the past or love at the present. We must, as it was said by Brother Harris last night and others, we must let this page be turned from yesterday to today. We cannot live in the mystery tomorrow of what might be when I get to heaven. You're not there yet, so why don't you do something where you are? Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I have not yet seen the... Uh, well, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just so glad uh, that, that when this is all over. No, be glad that it's not over and that God has you alive and well and you have a mind to hear, uh, to receive, and that God is still dealing with your heart, still leading you, still guiding you. The church cannot remain as it has been. It cannot live in the rosy future of what might be. It must live in the reality of now. And now is to let Christ become the head. Amen. And every one of us take our bigotry, our prejudice, our past experiences that uh, made us uh, more uh, sad than glad, made us more bad than good, made us more bigoted and prejudiced, uh, then our minds open and discard them and get rid of them. You don't have to get rid of anything that's true. Truth remains forever. You don't have to trade any truth that you've ever received or anything that might not be true today. Uh, but we, we must take the step from where we are. Whatever we have now, remember this. This is a good thing to remember. Whatever the church feels it is now, whatever accomplishment we have in Africa or in India or America or South America or across the world, whatever we think that we are doing, Look outside. Look outside. The drug world is taking millions. Divorce is taking millions. Homosexuality is taking millions. Uh, the world is full of the poor and the homeless. They're everywhere. On every street, in every city. We have not conquered nor solved the end of our day. There is work to be done. There is a gospel to be preached. There's missionary work to be done. Let the evangelists be raised up. 
Let the prophet speak. Let the visionary, clairvoyant mind speak out. The church needs help now. We need a new invigorating impelling of the roaring of the lion of the tribe of Judah. as a lamb, but he still is a lion. Yes. He's a lamb, he's a lion. He can be the lamb, he is the lion. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. My, and, and to do that, brethren, you, uh, many of you have known me many years. You've known me now many years. You've known me many years now. But I tell you, you and I are getting many years of knowing when I, there's hardly just a few years that I haven't. I've watched you grow through the years. You've watched me through my experiences. But look, that isn't, that isn't the key right now. The key to ministry is to take this right here, the living Word of God, All right. and let the Holy Spirit uh -huh. take our mind, our thoughts, uh -huh. our feelings, and whether I be 79 as I am, or whether you be 50 as you may be, or 45, or 40, or 60, or whatever, it doesn't matter. All right. It doesn't matter. If the Holy Spirit uses you for one moment, there was a young man named Stephen that we only have record of him being used one time. He never saw age. He never saw time. One time, God inspired that young man. And brother, you cannot read the book of Acts and read his message without it raising you up from your seat and just lifting your hands up because here was a young man that God only used one time. Why argue about if God wants to use you once, uh, let him use you one time. If he wants to use you many times, let him use you many times. Yes. Yes. Would you be willing to change if he said change? Would I be willing to change if he said change? Would I be willing to forget the misery of anything just deluding my vision of Christ and his loveliness and his grace? Is he still the rose of Sharon to me? Is he still the lily of the valley? Is he still the bright and morning star? Can I worship him freely, independently of anything today that may be choking my spirit from yesterday? Can you look across the aisle and everywhere on the platform and look at every man and say, I will not look at him as being peculiarly Brother Smith or peculiarly uh, Brother Klein, or Brother Rattini, or Brother Marlow. Can you look past that and look and say, I wish nothing but for that man to stand up and lift his voice and the bellows of his soul cry out and the Holy Spirit take his words and go into me and change me from the mortal to the immortality. Change my mind from the darkness and change it to light. I can, I believe I can. I, I couldn't always, but I can. I can look over this crowd. I can be in this meeting. I'm not here competing against a meeting a few days from now. Whatever city is taking place, wherever ministers are gathering together, if I could, I'd be there with them. I have no bars against other men of God. I have no prejudice against the rest of the family of God. I do not believe for a moment this is the total body of Christ Amen. sitting right here. I believe we're only a small dimension, a small part, but God is eventually going to have 10,000 times 10,000. Praise the name of the Lord. in the book of Revelation where they were without number. Yes. Without number. Yes. Well, said, oh, we had 500 over here. We had a thousand. Friend, rejoice in it if you want to. But that isn't going to be a drop in the bucket to what Christ is going to rejoice in yes. when he sees yes. gathered around the throne of God, a number which no man can number. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. And they washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb and made them fight. Hallelujah. We had 300, we had 200, we had two, we had three. Doesn't matter. Numerically, what do you have? You have nothing but what Christ had given you. You can have nothing. I can have nothing but what Christ will allow me to have. There can be no 
clap of the hands from me unless Christ allows. Secondly, no one, uh, if Christ allows, ten to throw rocks at me and one to say good things because they God allowed it. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. David said, Lord, should I, wasn't should I all alone? Uh, he's over there discounting me. But David said, leave him alone. One of his young men said, I'll go and take his head off. He said, don't you do it. That's good for me, what he's doing. But David was a man whose heart was after God. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. If all men praise me, don't get exalted. If all men curse me, don't get down. I belong to God. I'm his property. Yes. He is mine. I have to finish my ministry. This 80 by 80 structure, these buildings are on the grounds, these 58 saints that live here in these apartments and houses around me. If this is the end, this is the total. Thank God. It's been a glorious run. Praise the name of the Lord. If he wants to give me more, if he wants to give me less, where's that 30 by 24 building? And they put me back there. Create a sawdust floor. I must not complain. I must not shout. I cannot enter this pulpit and preach the grace of God if I don't have the grace of God. I cannot tell you to go up the ladder if I'm not going up the ladder. There must be Christ again. Christ again. So if you're out there, and I've got a lot of people working in this meeting, and they're hearing me in the kitchen right now, if somebody doesn't hand you the spoon in the kitchen like you think they should, if you can say, praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. Now, if you can't say it that minute, take a few steps back, cool your spirit, yes. uh, say to God, I love you, and then say, thank you. Praise God. Amen. 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 If somebody happens not open the door properly for you, if all men don't praise you, remember in the end, it's to him. It's not about you. It's not about me. I'm temporal. He's eternal. I'm going to him. He's the Lord. He's the head of the church. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's the head. He's the leader. We get caught up in the religiosity, in the politics of the local church. Local churches have politics. They have cell groups. They have... Uh, uh, there's a word I'm trying to, uh, uh, foxholes, and that is it. Uh, flicks, yes, there's another word there in the army that you, uh, you know, but I can't get it right now. Uh, but, you know, uh, they have in, in case pillboxes, and, uh, and, and sometimes we've got caught up in having to use the flamethrower to get them out of there and threw the hand grenade and try to get them out. Uh, but, you know, uh, that is the past religion, the new phase of faith is preach the word. All right. Paul said preach the word. Preach the word. And if the word cannot guide the church and if the Holy Spirit will not cooperate, it means that he alone has said it will not be. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. But if he said it will be, every word you say that's under the inspiration of the Spirit will edify that church and you will grow. If you have seen no political office, if you don't want to next time I hear your name called, I like to hear my name called. I'm Fletch, I'm Fletch. I certainly don't want you to walk around me and never say Brother Marlowe, uh, you know. But on the other hand, I cannot afford to let it exalt me. Then I cannot let it depress me. If you don't, I must let my attention be in him. Yes, Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I love Hebrews 12 and 2. Wherefore then, 12 and 1, wherefore then seen... You can put it with me if you want to. Wherefore, seeing we also are encompassed about, are encompassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. In 1 Corinthians 12, and I am moving back then, I promise I won't keep. Uh, blessed is a minister that can keep his word. But uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, Paul said, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away under these dumb idols, even as you were not, were led. Uh, Paul is giving instructions to the
Corinthian church, which was made up of a good part of the Gentile heritage. Wherefore, I give you to understand, I think he's saying I want you to understand, that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse. But that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. I won't reiterate that because I've been ministering on that the last hour or so. Um, he's the Lordship. And without the Lordship, you can't acknowledge him as Lord, and you can't say he is the Lord, but without the Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are diversities of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh in all. That the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Just read a verse or two. I'm not going to comment on a lot of this, but I just want you to fasten your mind. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self-same Spirit, dividing to every man as he will, cleverly as he will. For the, as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Now, he uses this thought that we quote so often, but notice he used it after this explanation. For by one spirit are we all baptized into that one body, or immersed into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, have been all made to drink into one spirit. Amen. For the body is not one member, but many. I could go on from there, but stop right there. I want to say to the assembly in Bradenton that's listening, you that are in the sanctuary, you that are on the grounds, you that are serving, Brother Marley wants you to have a legacy of Christ. I want this meeting to continue of the body, the many members I want it to be one body. I want to be a part of that. No time may come when I physically cannot stand here. That may be. I don't know God's will. My voice may come to a close. I don't know what the future holds. No man does. When you're bigger than your strength, God alone knows the years ahead. But I would like for you to know that I see and I'm encouraged more than I've been in 66 years, 67 years now. From 12 years old till now, this is the high day Hallelujah. of my life. Praise I am absolutely hilarious. You know what I see the Lord. And you know the good part is Satan cannot stop it. It's going to happen. <laughs> Let every man be a liar, but let God be true. Praise the name of the Lord. Let every man be a liar, but let God be true. This is going to happen. Not my article of faith, not your design, not my architecture. And remember, God only wants me to love you and appreciate you. He doesn't want me to cut you out. He doesn't want me to... I make a postcard of you. Don't want me to make a hero of you. He doesn't want me to do anything but be just a hand to feed you if necessary, or you be a hand to feed me if, uh, if you're that member. Be an eye to see, uh, be, be an ear to hear, whatever. But just be content to be in one spirit, in one body, without wanting to tear, rend, divide, separate. Just be a vessel that God can speak true. If you know I'm standing here, you're there. But all of you, that's your same charge. You don't have to try to fill anybody else's shoes. Just be what God wants you to be. Just be the member that God has called you to be. 
And when you know your anointing and your calling, open up to the anointing, let God give you the calling, and do what God wants you to do. Every man in place did that. Every man. There couldn't have been another man but Peter stand on the day of Pentecost. I don't care how Thomas wanted it, James wanted it, John wanted it. Only Peter could stand there because God had ordained it, predestinated it, and not another man. He, I, was, I was not to be born back there because if I had been born, I might have wanted to be in Peter's place. But God let me want to be born 2,000 years later to be sure I feel my place and not his. Right. God controls all things. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. Never sit in envy. Never sit in jealousy. Never sit in anger. Just be what God wants you to be. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. Because the body is not one member, but many. Yes. And by one spirit, we're all baptized yes. into that one body. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise our God. I today am not the same preacher I was a year ago. I've had a revolutionary change in the last 12 months of my life. And you know what? God is changing me so much right now. I get up in the morning, look at the mirror and say, who am I? Because the Lord is changing me. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord is changing me. I'm finding out the grace of God is really so. The grace of God is really true. It's not a word you say. It's not an expression you use. The grace of God is the living heritage of the living Christ to the living church. Praise the name of the Lord. And I have it, and you have it, and it's spread upon us all. May we all lift our hands right now and say, Thank you, Lord, for the delivered body of Christ. I am a part of it. Accept me as I am. Don't notice the curvature of my nose. Don't look at the white of the winter in my hair. Don't say, winter's come for Brother Marlow. See the springtime of the revelation that whoever you are, whatever you are, God has predestinated, controlled, and ordained. Right. And you'll be if you follow that word. Praise, praise the name of the Lord. Praise. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Hang on to your chair. Just uh, be in a good spirit. Love God. And we'll all help wherever we can. If you have a need, let it be known. But I say today, the Lord, and these are the closing words, the Lord has turned the page of time in the church. It will no longer be, and brethren, listen to me around me closely. I'm not the guy to tell you anything. I'm only a vessel that God may speak to occasionally. We no longer can be territorial governors of territory that belongs to Christ. We no longer can have dominion where Christ has dominion. We must give him his chair, give him his place, and let the Holy Spirit lead and guide the church. And we simply will fit into our gift and our calling, and we will honor one another, and we will love each other. Praise the name of the Lord. And we will enter a transitional ministry. And when you enter that transitional ministry, you will not worry about being a success or a failure. And a little 40 by 80 or an 80 by 80 or a 5,000 seat or, or a 3,000 seat or a 4,000 or a 100 or a 50 seat, none of us. We will just let Christ rule because Christ will be there to rule. And we will just be members working with him. We will honor one another. I honor this man from East Africa. I never knew him until a few years ago, but I have always said, God gave him a gift that he didn't place me in. And I am so happy every time I hear the roar from Africa, say, or Europe, or wherever he goes, or America. I'm so happy for the Pat Hanniger to hear from over there in California what God may be doing with you. Brother Wedderburn, it thrills me to know that Brother Wedderburn is on the field fighting the good fight of men. Brother Leander Ray, I'm so glad to see you and to be in this meeting with you. Uh, Brother Doug Atkins, Brother Carlson came to live with us a few months ago in the assembly here, Brother Dennis Carlson. And I said to him, Brother Carlson, let the Lord use you and minister as God lets you minister, because I'm thrilled. It's not me, but it is me. When he stands up, God resemble Brother Carlson. I don't think they do. All the time. Because when he stands, 
I stand. When he says, I say, we're together. We're not divided. We're not apart because God brought us from different ways, different places. Praise the name of the Lord. I can do that down the road to all of you. We are not territorial governors of anything but what belongs to Christ. He is the Lord, and he will be the Lord. And eventually, he will be the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. We're entering a transitional ministry. For Brother Bond Reynolds, if you can show up here uh, and be used of God, let God use you. I haven't gotten to go to Africa the last two years, but it's not because I don't want to be there. I'm considering your meeting at Easter. I, it's not because Brother Marlow has departed from fellowship. It's not because I've departed from fellowship with you that I haven't been where you are. We are getting ready for God to give us transitional ministry where we can labor together in one mind, one accord, and one spirit. I've said enough. I've gone over my limit in time. Thank you for bearing. I say praise the Lord for today. Thank him for this great meeting, and may the Lord take charge and the rest of the meeting. You are. You're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. Praise our God.